So I am, what I found interesting was that you originally thought about making this as a documentary rather mm. than a narrative film. And I wanted to know how close did you actually come to pulling the trigger on this being a doc? Not, not close at all, actually, not close at all. It was, um, it was like a first kind of first impetus, like a first idea um, that I had because I thought like, oh, what a fascinating thing that this you know condition actually exists. And, you know, is sort of like growing in, um, in teenagers. But I also felt uh, that in reality, like the themes that I kind of wanted to explore and the story that I wanted to tell, I didn't really want to do that, like within a, in, in a real world setting, you know, or like necessarily have in a sense, a position towards species dysphoria or make a film about species dysphoria. So that was quite clear to me early on. So it was kind of more like, um, I guess, you know, I have a background in journalism and documentaries. So it was more like a, a light bulb, like a trigger um, and a jumping off point. But then I, I quite quickly departed and decided to just write my, my fiction narrative. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is every director I've spoken to talks about how um, making any movie is a miracle, right? Uh, just getting the financing to make anything. So um, I'm curious for you with making this project, how difficult was it actually to get the financing because you're not telling a narrative story that a lot of, you know what I mean? This is not, um, this is a tough subject matter, if you will. You know, oddly, I mean, everything, of course, like I completely agree with every director, like making a film is like, incredibly difficult but oddly the financing of the film wasn't the hardest part like we um I think people were quite drawn to the fact that it was a sort of like quite original subject and just I think there is a lot of hunger for sort of quirky unusual stories right now and 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 I and Screen Ireland you know who were the main backers and then uh, actually I think it was almost like maybe it was actually like I think Screen Ireland had already basically like they knew they were going to fund us. Polish Film Institute was the first, then Screen Ireland, Euromage. Like that was oddly seamless. I mean, the budget was small, like really small. You know, it's like two million budget, like a very, very, you know, very um, ambitious film for what it was. But that two million, you know, I think like, I think the funding bodies were super on board, you know, and really understood. Maybe they, even if they didn't fully, fully know what the film would be, I think they had faith and and were were intrigued. So. I think compared to other films, it was like an easier sell, oddly enough. What was it like walking in those rooms to try to pitch them on the money? What was like, did you practice uh, like your one liner and your, you know, your pitch? Um, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, we did like, I mean, because Jesse, my business partner, so we, we have a company together called Feline Films. And, you know, we basically set up this company when I had a, a 10 page treatment for for Wolf. And it was like our thing, you know, that was kind of the project for the company to, to grow on. So we we just signed up to like every European market possible. And, um, and we just, yeah, we were just like pitching nonstop, like meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. And it was like, so Wolf is a film about a boy who thinks he's a wolf. Blah, 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 blah. And it just like, on, and, 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 it, and it kind of like, yeah, it was relentless. It was relentless. But I guess like, I think the advantage maybe that we had is, you know, you go to those markets and it's like three days and it's, I don't know, 25 meetings a day and people are so bored and they feel like, you know, you can just like see producers, like their eyes dropped off or funding, but they're just like not interested. But at least I think the fact that it was kind of a strange premise and being like, no, they're going to crawl on all fours got people interested. Again, of course, some people hated it and some people really liked it, but I would say they were like fairly attentive at least. Uh, obviously casting on this movie is everything. Um, and you really need actors that are going to fully commit to these roles and performances. Um, when did you know, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the casting process and when did you know, you know, George and Lily were the right ones? So yeah, the casting process was was very staggered actually because it, I had so many roles to fill and, you know, very, very complicated ones. So. Um, like it, it was, you know, it was, it was different for each character, you know, um, with, with Lily, I think like she did 
she was pitched to me actually by her by her agent and then I kind of first I first saw her and I was like wow like she has something really feline and I wasn't planning to sort of like cast every character like their animal but there was something in fact almost quite interesting about the own like one of the characters who doesn't really think that they're that animal to sort of look very cat-like and um and we did, we met, then we did a couple auditions and we sort of like worked together in person in Paris. And, and then at some point I was like, you know, she really, you know, she really gets it. And she really went for it and, you know, just got the character and also like was brave in her audition. And with George, like, I think with Jacob's character, like it was slightly different because at some point I realized like, it's very, very, very hard, like, because so much work needed to go into like preparing for the physicality of the role and the movement and everything that I wasn't just going to find that in tapes, like no actor was going to turn on, put a camera and be a wolf. And um, so we kind of changed approach and decided to just like look at actors that I thought were really brilliant and, and solid and strong and just kind of have faith in them and their commitment to the part. And with George, that's, that's, that's how it went. Like, you know, we had a really good chat and obviously he'd done like, you know, he'd done like Ned Kelly where he was extremely physical and, and he just, you know, he was really up for the challenge. And I think it, it felt, it felt very right. And then we did a week of, of, um, of prep in Dublin with a movement specialist and he just like nailed it. So, so that was, yeah, so that was great. And then, but then the whole, pro, you know, the whole casting, I mean, with each one of them, I mean, it, it just went, it went on for, yeah, quite a long time. Well, what's interesting is, and I read that you were getting ready to film uh, and then all of a sudden, of course, COVID, um, and then you shut down for a number of months. Uh, but I've spoken to a lot of filmmakers and they talk about how the extra time can really benefit a project. So I'm curious, what did you actually do during that downtime that you think helped make the film even better? So, yeah, so I mean, it, obviously, like the first thing was the heartbreak of like, we can't shoot. Will we ever be able to shoot? What is this? Like that was that was that was quite tough, especially when you have that all that energy geared up to jump into a film. And then it's just like, nope, there's a global pandemic. Um, but you know, I was just very lucky that all of my actors, you know, I think, again, like I'll agree with most filmmakers that you spoke to that I think you have this like very particular circumstance in which everybody is stuck, you know, in a, in a time warp almost, and they are just about to do your project. So they can't really like audition for other stuff or, you know, nothing is going on. So they had so much time to think about their characters. To, and like with George, like he did so much work on crawling around. I mean, like my phone at the time, like I looked like some crazy creep, you know, who had all these like videos of like topless actor going around on all fours on like the Heath and, um, and yeah, and Lily as well. Like really, I mean, all of them though. I mean, they were, and, and we would just constantly like chat, like we would sort of zoom like once a week and, and have a chat and he, would, and he and she would send me videos of themselves and, and we continued, you know, developing the character. I continued like interrogating the script. Uh, I simultaneously, I was working with the cinematographer, like we were zooming, blocking every couple of days, like going through scenes. So, so yeah, I mean, it just, it just gave more time to prepare really. And I think that was essential, especially because obviously COVID costs so much for every film. And there were so many unforeseen costs that only preparation kind of, you know, could save what that, effect was on on every production going in that time uh the first scene that they have together um is when they are both um in their animal you know they're both there's no dialogue they are both in their um you know wolf cat what how how tough was that to figure out how you wanted to block and stage that scene and figure out that introduction between the two of them and it's also an introduction to the audience at their relationship yeah, that was a really that was a really interesting one because it was like one of the few things that in the script just said like they walk around each other like animals <laughs> and um, and I always joked with them that like if it was shit that we were just gonna you, they would know because I was just gonna go for a wide like a very cinematic wide and have two dots on the rooftops but there was there really wasn't any need for that because I mean I do think it's one of the strongest scenes of the film and I think we did. So we had, as I mentioned, this movement coach, uh, Terry, and like, and we just did like so much like work of chemistry building and, you know, them dancing together and then going for, and we, and pushed it and pulled it. And sometimes it was more choreographed and then it wasn't, and it was just rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. And then 
oddly, like on the day, what was quite interesting was, you know, we tried a bit of it, like, I think it was like a hybrid, the actual, the final product of, of the stuff that was rehearsed and the stuff that was completely improvised, but then just being like close to them and just saying, because they were so immersed in their animal selves that then I could just be like, break, you know? And then what you would get was these like tiny, like flinches or quite animal movements, like coming from just inhabiting that character and then breaking it with, with a voice or a note of direction. So they could kind of go, 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 B, 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 and then break it. And then, and I think it created this very, I mean, I think um, sort of quite, yeah, sort of animalistic and instinctive and a little bit unpredictable moment, um, which too much, like which rehearsal built and gave them the tools to have. And then kind of the freshness of then, breaking that during the shooting, I think really helped. Uh, I love talking to directors about the editing process uh, because it, you know it, that's where it all comes together. So what did you, what made you, I guess, what was it like editing this and what made you nervous when you first started editing and what were you like super happy about? So I, I worked with an editor that I, who, who did my first film. Um, actually, I worked with like, yeah, both TP and editor from, from my first film. So what was great is that we did have like, you know, a, a shorthand, like an understanding each of, it, of each other. Um, I think the hardest, you know, what sort of freaked me out or the hardest thing was just like the amount of material that we had and like the amount of scenes that I had written and which didn't ultimately make the cut. Um, because what I discovered in the edit was, I mean, I'm not saying it was always, of course, it was called Wolf and it was Jacob's piece, but I think it had slightly more of an ensemble feel. And, you know, when I wrote this script, for me, there was an interesting tension between the fact that without, I never wanted to tell the audience how to respond to the other characters. But in my mind, there's a huge question whether e the secondary characters do really think that they're those animals. And I think, you know, with a lot of them, you can pick up that they actually might have like traumas, like for example, you know, German Shepherd and Wildcat clearly states it, but you know, even like, if you look at Parrot, like, and, you know, spitting her food out and, you know, little things if you pick up on them. And so that makes you question like, okay, well, why do they want to be in this clinic, you know? And do they want to like, and are they searching for an identity? Which of course I think when you have that in contrast, contrast with someone like Jacob who actually is so trying to repress it but so intrinsically feels that he is, you know, for me, that's an interesting film. And, um, and then what I realized in the edit is that because Jacob's character is so hermetic and so unreadable, it's it, every time we kind of strayed too much into like ensemble or other stories, it, it took away from him. And that was a sacrifice. And that was, um, it was a sacrifice that I had to, that I had to make. And I had to do it in favor, I think, of, you know, rhythm and of his character. And if we didn't feel with him and very, very hard character to feel with, I think. And that's, I mean, George is an unbelievable performance, but he almost says nothing, you know? So you're just watching this guy, this guy, this guy. And if there was too much, you know, song and dance on either side, but yeah, it, 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 it did make me just that tiny bit sad that maybe a little bit of the questions that the other characters raised were sort of reduced um, in the final version. And that I, and I hope, you know, I really hope that people don't just look as, at the film as just a sort of like one dimensional metaphor about someone who thinks he's a wolf, because I think that institution, that world, all of the different characters actually inform, you know, other themes, really other questions. Yeah. What is it like actually having to pick up the phone and call some of the other performers in the movie and being like, Hey, listen, you were fantastic. And I know we shot like 30 minutes, but you're only going to be in the film for like five or 10. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking like, did I, yeah, with one, with one actor, I had to do that. Like, uh, and it was, yeah, it wasn't, you know, it's never, it's, it's, yeah. it's never easy, you know, especially because they really like were fantastic. I mean, that, that, that's, I mean, I think, you know, I don't want to pat myself on the back too much. Like I think as a director, you're always so critical of your work, but I do think the casting was, was great. Like really, I was like so in love with each one of them. And it was, it was, it was hard. It's so heartbreaking every time you have to let go of something or whether it's a scene or a character or an idea, even, you know, it feels like, it feels like a small failure, I suppose, you know, and then you have to just kind of buckle up and think that's filmmaking and that's learning, you know, it's only my second film as well. So 
Listen, I've, 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 every director I've spoken to, I mean, you know, there's always deleted scenes and there's always choices you make in the editing room. It's just, but that's why I always talk to directors about it because, you know, that's where it all gets rewritten. That's the final write, you know, or final rewrite, if you will. Anyway, um, so one of the things that um, I thought was interesting is the color choices you make, like the color palette. And so could you sort of talk about like those choices and how early on did you know uh, you know, the aesthetic of the film and was it, you know what I mean? Like, if you could talk about that. Yeah. So like um, the, in terms of the aesthetic, I had like from very, very early on, there was a photographer that I quite like, um, liked uh, called Alexander Gronsky. And he had these sort of, he's beautiful. Um, I, I know the name of the tree, but I cannot <laughs> remember it right now. Those thin ones that are in the film. Um Silver birch, silver birch. God, you think after spending so many months with them that um, silver birch with these, and he he's like he's he's Russian and he sort of shoots in the per peripheries of Russia and like had these like beautiful sort of very Soviet um, backgrounds and in, in particular there was one photograph which is the cover board for my mood board which is like a birch silver birch tree forest with orange leaves and the sky is a sort of like pastely gray blue and there's a building that you can't quite place sort of in time but has a sort of Soviet feel and I just loved this image like loved it and that really dictated a lot because like from that we kind of built you know initially you know I thought oh the indoor garden has to be sort of plastic da, 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 because conceptually that was what I was thinking but then I kind of kept on shying away from that because aesthetically like it just didn't like it it was so jarring so then we kind of with the production designer really worked around that image and the other images I'd chosen so like again like the leaves and going for silver birches and actually going for things that don't really look that plasticky ultimately but because I I just found that that kind of hybrid of like and and in for example the therapy room you know there's this the the uh, the DP is Polish so he took a photograph of a building in Warsaw like knowing again how much I you know, love this photographer of this like building in Warsaw and we printed that. So instead of having like in the script, it was like a metropolis, you know, like more New York. And they're like, no, let's stick to this, you know, odd vibe that I had in my mood board. And so we used that instead. And um, yeah, and then the colors kind of like, they all kind of sort of stemmed from that. And, and, and then the costumes, like a lot of it. So it was like kind of really, we nailed the palette with the designer, like working around all of those. Like at first it was all sort of more blues and greens. And then we started playing, it just felt too much and too claustrophobic. There was also the idea of it being kind of an aquarium somehow, like rather than a zoo paradoxically, because the building has so much glass. So kind of the blues and trapping them in. And I, you know, the photography is always going to be quite static, quite steady apart from when we're following them as animals. So, so all of those things kind of, tapered out and then once we had nailed the design and new like for every room again the pandemic brilliant because production designer just did like renders like and he would never like on our budget like I mean doing commercials in between have had the time like everything was measured you know rendered color like we would look we'd go through them we'd block shots on them it was it was brilliant and then once we had all that we went for the costumes and we tried and we tried and we tried and that took quite a while and so yeah but I guess probably it all stemmed from those first kind of those first instincts you know that you have something that kind of draws to you um on that note I have to stop I've been given that signal that says you're done yes. um I'm just going to say congratulations on the movie and uh, I really hope you're making something again very soon I hope you've uh you know you must have some ideas in a closet in a desk. yeah 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 writing away I'm writing away already I'm not not wasting any time you can't I life's too short that I agree with 1000%. Um, on that note, thank you for giving me your time. Good luck with any thank other Thank you so much. Today. Thank you. Have a fantastic day. Bye.